Welcome to Star Valley, or Wyoming, or Afton, or whatever you want to call it. Welcome, Temple Touring. Well, I guess technically the Star Valley Temple is in Afton, Wyoming, so all of that was correct. But you know, whatever. Welcome Temple Touring fans, my name is Hillary, and in this episode we are going to visit the Star Valley Temple and the areas around it which is basically surrounded by two of the most well-known national parks in the United States, Yellowstone and Grand Teton. And if you've never been there, you really should. Got to visit as a kid, I think I appreciate them even more now as an adult than I did when I was a kid. So in this episode, because it happened during COVID-19 and the reservations were made before COVID-19 and were non-refundable, we were still going to attend. On this girl's trip, Anna, Debbie, and I will stop in Afton to see the temple and grub up before hitting a traffic jam in Jackson and setting up camp in Grand Teton's Culture Bay Village. Then it's on to Yellowstone with its hikes, natural wonders, and socially distant visitors. With campfires and tinfoil dinners, this was just what I needed to remind me of who I am and what life's all about. From Utah County to Coulter Bay, it's just under six hours. Normally, we would stop at the temple, walk the grounds, and do some work inside, but with the Rona around, a couple of pictures were all we were able to get. A block north of the Star Valley Temple, next to the regional airport, is Red Baron Drive-In. With everything but the roller skates, Red Baron's is every bit the classic car hop with a modern tech touch. They have burgers, fries, tater tots, and shakes, and yes, even fry sauce, even though here it's called Red Baron sauce. They even have your Dirty Dr. Pepper and specialty soda mixes. I had the Big Al special and I wasn't disappointed. Ham and cheese on a burger with special sauce. Anna enjoyed her specialty peanut butter Nutella shake, and Debbie shared her onion rings. The staff was friendly, helpful, and quick, which was impressive, especially considering the place was packed and people had to park next door and walk over. Knowing now that you can order ahead on their app, that's what I'll be doing next time I'm driving through Afton. Then it was off to Coulter Bay in Grand Teton. The sun was setting and we hit some traffic in Jackson, so it was dark by the time that we arrived. Luckily, the front office is open 24 hours, so we were able to quickly get settled in for the night once we found our tent. I wish we could have spent more time in Coulter Bay. There was so much that we didn't get the chance to experience. With its great rates and being right on Jackson Lake, this would be a great jumping off point for any adventure or even for say a family reunion. They have everything you need. We compared it jokingly to girls camp in young women's, but honestly it was a lot nicer than the Camp Shalom of my youth. It was more like glamping. The tents have electricity and the front desk has Wi-Fi, but you don't have to tell your teenagers that. Well, honestly, I loved Coulter Bay Village and I would go back time and time again. I think you should too. And now for your morning reveille. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I totally just turned into my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and with that morning salutation, we were off to see Old Faithful and do some hiking. While Old Faithful does shoot off at regular intervals, if you take a walk around the boardwalk, you'll see several other geysers, and a couple of them reach greater heights than the Old Faithful itself. It would be worth the walk. Hotel. <laughs> I, need, I need some music choreographed. <laughs> 
think? Oh, gosh. Tell me you did not think it belonged. I did not, but I am now. While social distancing our way to the gift shop, we ran into this work of art, as well as a small photography museum and some paintings for purchase. When we arrived at the trailhead for Storm Point Loop Trail, lots of people were there and there were about six bison on the trail. An individual bison is about the weight of a vehicle, so please remember to be careful and keep your distance. You can get the latest on social distancing from the animals and the national parks on their website, nps.gov. I'll include that and all of the rest of the links at the end of the episode. Just remember to give these animals the same space you would want for yourself. Make no mistake, it's still a wild place with wild things, and that deserves respect. But for now, let's move on to Natural Bridge. Baby, I need your loving. Got to have all your loving. Baby, I need your loving. Got to have all your loving. While both Storm Point Loop Trail and Natural Bridge are easy enough for children and adults, this might be a little too much for the older folks. They may want to stay at the trailhead. Moose Falls, on the other hand, would be appropriate for all ages as it's short and pretty dang beautiful. You just want to keep an eye on everybody as there are some short cliffs and some rapids. if you were so inclined, this would be a great place for a family photo or even say a marriage proposal. I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying she's a great girl and you should really think about it. And then you could come back later and take a family photo in a couple of years. I'm, I'm just saying. With that subtle hint, it's time to head back to camp and teach the ladies how to make a fire and how to make tinfoil dinners. Luckily, these ladies were smart enough to bring stuff for s'mores, and that was a treat, let me tell you. Oh. to get some rest. Good night. While Lewis Falls does have a trail, it's more of a sight off the side of the road that if you're not looking for, you'll totally miss. But it is really, really worth it. Cliff 
geyser was something we just happened to see off the side of the road and we pulled in and as we're walking over to it we were able to get closer to these geysers than we were some of the more well-known geysers so definitely worth taking a look at The site has a level boardwalk with railings, so no problem for any member of the family. Just make sure not to get too darn close because it's pretty warm. And probably not as good of a place to propose as say Moose Falls. You know, it's pretty terrestrial or telestial, one of the two, but not the best. Do it at Moose Falls. For the best hotel rates and camping rates, remember to book early. I'll include the website for Coulter Bay at the end of the episode. And for park closures and advisories, including anything to ha having to do with COVID-19, remember to check the National Parks website, nps.gov. As far as a pass goes for the park, I would probably recommend getting the America the Beautiful Pass. It's an annual pass that costs about $80 and gets you into all of the national parks in the country. When you purchase a day pass for any of the national parks, it's $35. And so two days or two entrances into any of the national parks would be 80 bucks-ish, right? So it pays for itself. They have seven day passes, but you're gonna wanna go to all of the national parks at some point. So you may as well get started. There's also discounts for seniors. There's the lifetime pass for seniors, which is $80 and an annual pass, which is 20. There's also the fourth grader free pass and the military and veterans free pass. So with all of these discounts and free passes, there's really not a reason to not go out and see the national parks, right? Now, Mystic Falls was the hardest of the hikes that we did as we took a right at the fort to go up over the bluff and see the entire valley below us. There was Old Faithful in the background and it was pretty uphill. There were a couple of people that had to turn back that we passed and one lady had to be hauled off the mountain because she had sprained her ankle. I have to say, I have a lot of respect for these rescue workers and Forest Service members. My grandpa used to work as a Forest Service member and he built these trails and fought these fires. In fact, my mom's first birthday was spent in Yellowstone in a tent. <laughs> it was a quick trip, but now it's time to head home through Yellowstone's west entrance and down through Idaho, where grandpa was born and raised. Sure, West Yellowstone has your big international fast food chains, but we wanted something a little bit more local. So yeah, we opted for Bullwinkles. Don't let the name fool you. It was pretty tasty and exactly what we needed after that last hike. It's downtown, has an Old West motif. The staff is extremely friendly and eager to help. And you can order ahead online and take it to go, though we chose to dine in. 
And now it's really time to hit the road. So I liked Yellowstone as a kid on the family road trip, but I have to say I loved it as an adult. I got to do the things that I wanted to do and that was okay. Yeah, it was a quick trip, but it is one that I won't forget for sure for many reasons. <laughs> you know, when you stand at a distance and look at the bison, when you watch the geysers, when you hike the bluffs in these parks, it gives you this appreciation for its creation and um, a, pre a gratitude for its beauty, um, gratitude for its grandeur, and for me, I don't know, humbled is what I guess I'd say I felt by my tiny little place in this big and stunning world and I guess that's kind of the point right anyway I really think that you would enjoy your Yellowstone trip in conjunction with your Star Valley Temple trip and uh, highly recommend it and I want to thank you for joining us here on Temple Touring the ultimate temple tour as we did Star Valley and Yellowstone and Grand Teton. So thank you so much and I look forward to seeing you next time. For Debbie, Anna, and myself, love and base sauce.